focusing on the abilities of the glorified body. What kind of abilities will this new body have? And is heaven going to be boring in these new bodies? Brother Lewis, um, why don't you say hello to the viewers and, uh, and introduce yourself again? Okay, yes, my name is uh, Louis Figueredo. Uh, uh, Brother Chris and I met uh, working at Lowe's um, a lot longer than, I, than we both thought. And um, it's a... Uh, it's a blessing to be able to do this with him, to speak of the word and, um, and, and what the promises of God have in store for us, um, not just in this world, but uh, in, in eternity. Amen, brother. I mean, many of these talks that we're about to have, we've talked about, you know, uh, between us on break times in the parking lot of Lowe's, I remember. Yeah. And uh, boy, what fellowship, you know, that, we, what we, that we've had together over the years. And God has been good. So uh, I'm glad that he's allowed us to get together and, and, and share this with, with other uh, believers. Um, and may, may they, hopefully they'll get encouraged if they're going through some uh, hardships down here on this planet. Well, we're talking about the uh, glorified body and the abilities of the glorified body. And in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, it says this, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, okay, that it may be fashioned like unto this glorious body, his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Now, the Bible calls this body a vile body. Why is that? <laughs> it's a sinful body. It, it, it just wants to sin. Um, it, it fights the spirit, you know. The, and it's a constant battle that we have because uh, the original sin uh, that was passed, on, passed down to us, so that, that's all this body wants. Sin, 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 sin. That's all it wants to do. <laughs> yeah. It wants its own way. It's selfish. It is me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity. That's what it, it just looks out for number one, which is itself. Uh, it's funny how people say, oh, no, I'm not selfish. I'm a humble person. Well, <laughs> by <laughs> declaring your humility, I think you show that you're prideful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know, uh, so. <laughs> I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Yeah, I'm, I'm a good I'm person. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't send that much. You know, I'm not like yeah. a guy down the street. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. But it, the good news is it says here, we're going to be fashioned like unto his glorious oh, body. God. Now, isn't that amazing? Uh, this, because this is what we're touching on now. Now, the, the next question we should ask is, all right, what kind of body did Jesus have? in his, his res resurrection body. What kind of, what was it? Was it like a, a ghost body? Uh, was it, you know, a flesh and blood or was it just flesh and bone? And what animated this body? You know, it wasn't, obviously he drained all of his blood out at the cross. So it wasn't blood anymore because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says. So it has to be uh, a different kind of animation animated by the Holy Spirit, I would presume, right? Amen. Um, you, you know, um, John twenty nineteen says that um, the, uh, the disciples were uh, inside the room. It was evening. They were afraid of the Jews, and the doors were locked. It's very specific about saying that the doors were locked, and Jesus just appeared all of a sudden. Now, there's two instances where he eats with them. And the other one is in, in John, where they're fishing, and they come ashore, and they see him. He's there cooking, waiting for them to come. So it is a glorified spiritual body, but it's also a tangible body. It's, it, it, it is a... Um, it's a physical it's body. A physical body, yes. yes. Uh, so we, it's, this not, is not going to be like Casper the Friendly Ghost. No. Uh, you know, no. going, you know <laughs> this is going to be a physical vehicle yeah. 
yeah. uh, that's that's suitable for our born again spirits, right? Yeah. Yes, and it's funny because uh, whoever came up with the concept of Casper, the friendly ghost, has had an idea of what the Bible says because he's dressed in white <laughs> and he can go through walls. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, the, the the Hollywood version of Jesus, yes. right? Yeah, yes. yeah. I, 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 everybody goes. Everybody, everybody goes to heaven. You know, nobody goes to hell. Yeah. Unless you're unless you're Hitler or something, yeah, then you may yeah. go to the hell. But no, everybody else goes to heaven. Well, <laughs> according yeah, according to uh, a lot of the um, white supremacists, uh, Hitler is going is in heaven because although he did wrong, he thought he was doing right. Yeah, that's what we call delusional. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, like we always say, you know, everybody in hell right now is a believer yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's just that they believed on the wrong side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. too late for them in hell. Everybody knows the truth in hell. You know, if you look at the story of the rich man and Lazarus, but well, that's another side note. Yeah. But today, again, let's go back to the, uh, the glorified body and, the, the, and how it's going to be like Christ's body. Now, you just mentioned that the doors were closed when... Uh, Jesus appeared or entered into the room to show himself to the disciples. Now, what what the significance of that? What does that show us? What does that tell us uh, about the glorified body? What aspect of the glorified body does that, does that tell us about? Well, it just shows us there's no limitations to it. Yeah. It's just that simple. Uh, it can go anywhere, be anywhere, at any time, uh, here in a second. Um, you know, uh, when it talks in the Bible about the uh, Ethiopian, you know. Um, the eunuch. Yeah, the eunuch, um, uh, Stephen. Was it Stephen. Yes, he appeared. I mean, he was taken from where he was and, and, and transported to the Ethiopian, uh, you know. And, and that was just an example of what, you know, the, the Bible tells us about the abilities that we will have. Amen. And I'll read that. Um... Uh, in John chapter 20, uh, it, it's like it, sh it shows us that we're going to be operating in multiple dimensions, not just this three-dimensional world here. Yeah. Uh, in John 20, verse 26, it says this, And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, that's what you're talking about, yeah. and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believe. Now, this is very interesting, because Jesus is, is letting us all know through this account that it was him, number one, and he will be mm -hmm. the only one in a glorified body that has any scars. And those scars, I believe, will be a reminder for all eternity of why we are in heaven. Yes. Yeah. Those are the only things that won't heal on, on uh, completely on Jesus are those scars, nail prints and the wounds in the side, because it's going to be evident to all, every, anytime you see him, that he is the only savior of mankind. And that's the only reason we're, we're before the Father, right? Amen, amen. Uh, and he appeared to Thomas who, uh, who doubted because he had not seen. Uh, that's where the uh, doubting Thomas uh, expression comes from. Yeah. Um, but once, once he did, and people don't catch this. He, he kneels down and he says, my God. And that's, yeah. you know, Jesus is God. Thomas right. is letting everyone know that Jesus is God. And in this account, you see it's a, it's a literal, physical body. Yes. Because he says, touch me. Yeah. Okay? And he, he goes, be, be not faithless, but believing. Right? And then, you know, in a one another account, he says, "Because flesh and bone, you know, doesn't you, you can't touch a spirit, but you can touch flesh and bone, basically." You yeah, know, notice yeah. he didn't say flesh and blood. Yeah, no. You know, because the blood was drained out of his body. This is a this is a brand new resurrected body that's operating in a different level. Amen. I uh, 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 the blood is uh, has already. Uh, been shed uh we have been redeemed so the, there is no need for it that's right amen so no need for the weekly mass at catholic <laughs> services that calls down the son of god from the right hand of the father uh you know in transubstantiation you know in the mass every week 
uh, that, you know, they claim they, t- they transform the Lord into a piece of bread and wine. And you have to literally eat Jesus and literally drink his blood, sacrificing him over and over every week. Uh, you know, uh, we just did a series on the Catholic Church. Is the Catholic Church biblical? That's in the archives. You guys could check that out. And uh, boy, oh boy, they, they, they blaspheme God by saying that he has to be sacrificed over and over and over again every week, don't they? Yes, um, and, and well, yeah, the Catholic Church is biblical because uh, it tells us, <laughs> uh, uh, it warns us of uh, um, church, you know, what's going to happen in the end, and of, it warns us about the church, you know, Catholic Church and everything else. Um, that was, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the funny thing is that the Catholic Church, you know, the Pope gives the priest at Mass the power to create a God. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, they're li- they they claim to be little gods or little Jesuses yeah, on planet right, Earth. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's that whole thing right there. Yeah, you know, K- and, Kenneth, uh, yeah, Kenneth but, Copeland has that conversation every Christmas in the uh, uh, when he goes to Rome because that's where he spends Christmas every year. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> all ro- all robes they lead back yeah, to Rome. To Rome. But um, okay. One of the another aspects of the uh, glorified body is you know the physiology we just said you know we're going to have the same kind of body of jesus but is uh, daniel chapter 12 way back in daniel it says something interesting about the glorified body it says this in daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So we're going to be shining with mm-hmm. some sort of glory, some sort of light, bright, bright like the stars, it says, those who are resurrected uh, to everlasting life. What do you think? Yes, I, I think it's Matthew twenty-five forty-three, or I, and I forget where exactly it says that we are going to shine like the sun in the house of our father. Actually, yeah, that's Matthew chapter 13, uh, verse 43. It says, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You're right. Yes. I mean, uh, you know, if if you want to know what it's like and to shine and, you know, uh, the sun, but we know that we can't get any closer to the sun because it'll burn. It's just a perfect distance. So we are going to shine, but we're going to be standing in front of each other. Oh, yeah. It's not going to affect us in that way. We're not going to blind each other. You no. know, the, the, <laughs> the only light in heaven that, that's going to outshine everyone else is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, 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 you know, because we reflect their glory. And they, they radiate the glory. And um, what an amazing promise in Daniel that we will shine like the stars of heaven. You know, um, speaking of... Uh, being uh, having the same kind of body of Jesus as Jesus do, will, uh, does. Uh, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, it says this. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And of course, when the Bible says sons of God, it include, it means sons and daughters. Yeah. Uh, you, know, it, you know, we have to explain that because a lot of, you know, women that probably don't know, they're like, hey, how come you guys are being chauvinistic? You know, God has daughters too. Well, yeah, but when the Bible talks about sons of God, it's, it's also including the daughters of God because when Adam and Eve were first created, it was God that called their name Adam. Yeah. A lot of people think that God named Eve. It was, no, it was Adam who named Eve. He called both of their names Adam. and You can see that in Genesis. So it says in 1 John 3, 2 again, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, this is the rapture, we shall be like him. This is beautiful. For we shall see him as he is. Brother, we're going to be like him. There's no doubt of what we're talking about. The Bible describes that you and I and every other Christian on planet Earth will one day be transformed to be like our Savior. Now, this doesn't mean we take on Godhood. This just means we are physically going to be in his likeness with our resurrected body, doesn't it? Amen. The Bible tells us that we will inherit. Jesus says, all that the Father has given me, I will give you. So. 
it's not that we will become gods. We'll become immortals. We'll be in eternity. Um, but we will share. And he didn't say, I'll give you a percentage. He said, all. So all it includes, you know, our glorified bodies and, and the abilities that come with do, doing what Jesus was able to do. Amen. Amen, brother. Well said. Also says here, um, the, 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 again, back to Luke, when he was talking about, you know, this is the, uh, the, the hands and the feet, when he was saying, Luke 24, chapter 39 says, behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. That's what we mentioned earlier about it being flesh and bones, not flesh and blood. It's a very yeah. important, uh, you know, thing to notice because a lot of people think, oh, we're going to have blood. No, we're not going to have any blood anymore. It's not going to be animated by blood. That if we're in Christ, we're dead with Christ and we'll be resurrected with Christ. Okay? So we're going to be, it's going to be a supernatural animation to this body and it's going to last forever. It's, gonna, it's the great part. It's not going to, you're not going to need to refuel this body. You're not going to need to sleep. You're not going to need to rest or take a cold drink of water if you don't want. We're going to eat and drink for the pleasure of it, not because we need it to survive. This is going to be a whole new way of life for the, for the believer, exciting life, right? Amen, amen. And, and we see today uh, with the plastic surgeries, and people want to <laughs> look young all the time, and they want to live forever. And God has promised us that we will be young uh, for an eternity, and we will, uh, and we, you know, being in eternity, we will live forever. So right. what they are looking for, here on this earth, God has planned that for us already. Yeah, they just want, they don't want it. They want it. They want the benefits that God has to offer without God. Yeah. And, and then look, look, they're halfway right. You know, the plastic will look young for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the plastic will look young for a long time. Now yeah. the rest of them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to break the news to you. Plastic surgery is only half right. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's, it's true. They, they don't want to go through. Uh, they, they don't want to make that sacrifice. Now, back in the Old Testament, uh, Balaam, uh, when he was asked to curse Israel, it was Balaam? Yeah. Okay. You know, he's standing and he's looking at, uh, at you know, Israel, the, you know, as they came out of Egypt. And he's saying something like, I, I wish I had their blessings. But he doesn't understand that to have God's blessing, okay, you have to do your part. And he wasn't doing his part. He just right. wanted what the, the, the rewards without having to sacrifice anything. And that's, that's right. What you the know, world they, they, they often, that. a lot of the uh, replacement theologists also, they teach, oh, well, the church has replaced Israel, which is false, you know. Yeah. And they always want to claim Israel's blessings, and they never want to claim Israel's curses. <laughs> you know, it's That's funny true. how that works out. Yeah. And, you know, why in the world would you want uh, Israel's promises when the church has their own promises, heavenly promises, that expand to the universe? And we're talking about some of them now. You know, this body we're talking about, uh, and I mentioned it briefly, will operate in multiple dimensions. You know, walking through walls and... and Defying gravity and traveling at the speed of thought. We're going to go into all of those and have some biblical reasons why we say these things. Well, in John chapter 20, well, we just read that. This is uh, John chapter 20, 26, verse 27. It's talking about the upper room. But here we go. We got flight. Flight. You know, I've, you know, as a kid, I've always wanted to fly like Superman through Superman. the air, you know, and that's every kid's dream. You want to be able to fly through, through the air, right? Well, you know, the world really doesn't think about why these desires are in the, the human heart, you know. God has placed eternity in our hearts. Yes, yes. And a lot of these superhero movies and things like that are expressions of what people want. They want to be able to do these things because they know that they're weak. They know that they're frail. They know that they're, you know, they're, they're susceptible to any kind of affliction easily. And so when we look at Mark chapter 16, 19, this, this brought a, a, a smile to my face, man. It says, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Now, it's amazing how this is worded. He was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. So from earth to heaven was like this. Yes. He was received up into heaven and sat down. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> you know, it's not a long way to travel. This would be, you know, so yeah. brief. <laughs> yeah. in, in the twinkling, twinkling of an eye. Just like that. You're going to be, we're going to be zipping across this universe uh, like it's nothing, like we were walking to the car. It's going to be, it's going to be a beautiful and, and, and joyous uh, eternity for those of Christ. In Acts chapter 1, it says this. We're starting at verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, speaking of Jesus, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These are the two angels, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. You know, and that brings us to the next uh, 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 thing, the next ability, space travel. You know, remember Star Trek and then Star Wars and all those things we grew up with as kids, all those sci-fi, you know, uh, shows and, you know, all these adventures in space, lost in space and all that stuff. Well, uh, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to be lost in space, but we, we're going to be able to travel through it. Right, brother? Yes, uh, and we have a, according to science, an ever-expanding infinite universe. Um, and that's why people look for ray, uh, beings outside of the Earth because they cannot understand that in this whole universe, only Earth has um, humans. Uh, and the reason is that God has prepared this for us for the future. It'll be ours. That's right. You know, to, to travel. Yeah, he says he, he created the earth to be inhabited. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you see pictures like from the Hubble telescope, the beauty that is out there in the universe, it, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, and I, it's hard for me to, to, to imagine God creating the universe only to ground us on, on planet earth in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, because part of the reasons for this glorified body is to, so we can enjoy his vast creation and glorify yeah. God, no matter where we are in the universe, where we travel to, you know, you and I, uh, you know, we, we, we talk about this all the time, but let's look at the uh, text that, 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 that claimed this in John uh, 20 verse 17, it says this, Jesus saith unto her, touch me not. This is after his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is Mary Magdalene. For I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and to your God. So now he's, he's showing us that we're now joint heirs. Yeah. He's saying my father and my God is also your father and your God, which makes us joint heirs together, Amen. Amen. which is... You know, so anything that Jesus' body could do, and what you know, we're it's going to be passed on to us. And uh, you know, like we were talking, you know, can you imagine, brother, like you know, zipping across the Milky Way, looking at the sun close up without any risk of harm or anything like that? Isn't that amazing? It's uh, it, like you said, when we're, we're little kids, um. This is what we want to do. We want to be able to do all, all these things, to fly, to go here, to go there. Um, and we'll be able to do that. It is his promise to us that we will be able to do this. Amen. So that whole lie about, you know, heaven's going to be boring. I wonder what I'm going to be doing for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, come on, man. I have a pretty large imagination, and this surpasses yes. infinitely my imagination. Yes, it, 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 the Lord says it. You know, you, you, we have no idea of the things that uh, He has planned for us, and th and this is what he, That's he, right. he's Amen, brother. talking about. Amen. And here goes another one that's it's pretty. Uh, I mean, this is amazing. I can't wait because you know I have already sometimes I got uh, write down stuff or or I'll forget what I was about to say. Uh, we're gonna have the mind of Christ, a hundred percent. Thought capacity, man. We're going to have no more memory loss, no more having to take notes. Uh, anything we learn, it's going to be right there in the, the, the data bank forever, uh, you know, and uh, we don't have to worry about losing it or forgetting it. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, 
For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Isn't that something? We have the mind of Christ. You know, uh, no more Alzheimer's, my friend, right? <laughs> yeah. no, no more old timers. <laughs> yeah, old timers, that's it. <laughs> you know, also, um, it, it, we're going to have, like, again, we wear glasses. Yeah. And people tend to think that 2020 vision is perfect vision down here. 2020 vision is fallen vision. It's not perfect vision. This is the vision we call perfect when it's really fallen. We're going to have supernatural eyesight. We're going to be able to see God himself face to face. It says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This is not just a metaphorical, oh, you'll see him in the spirit. No, no, no. You're going to see God as his children, as father and son, father and daughter, face-to-face communication, relationship. Your eyes will be able to withstand the glory that you're looking at. Right now, it'll blow our heads off, but at that yeah. point, it will be a blessing. You'll be able to look upon the one who created us and died for our sins without blinking. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um it's uh, it, we cannot see past the wall that's in front of us. Okay, we can't see on the outside. We can't see anything else. Um, but with a glorified body, um, we have unlimited vision. There's nothing that we won't be able to see. And wherever we go in this vast universe, God will be there. Amen, brother. And I'll tell you what. Speaking speaking of uh, wherever we will be in the vast universe, meaning travel, we're gonna have supernatural travel. Yeah. You know, we're going to be able to travel at the speed of thought. You know, here goes an example right here um, in Luke chapter 24, uh, verses 30 and 31. You know, this is after Jesus' resurrection, obviously, and he's walking with two disciples that didn't recognize him. And finally, he reveals himself to them at, uh, at when they're eating dinner. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. He just vanished. I mean, this is a, he didn't get up and walk to the door, open the door and go through the door. He was at the table breaking bread with them and then after he did that, he was gone. Amen. Um, it, it's funny because of the, the Bible does not write anything that is not specific. So the, the, their eyes were open, and all of a sudden they see Jesus, but he wants to show them more than just, uh, I'm here sitting with you. He disappears. Uh, it, it, it's for our benefit that we know this, that he not only can feed us, but he can just disappear in the fear at any time. The wonderful thing about uh, promises to him is that he says that he will never leave us or forsake us. Okay, it doesn't mean he left Amen. them. It's, it's it's for them to see what a glorified body, you know, would be able to do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think about it. What an incentive, you know. That's like the hors d'oeuvre before the main course. Yeah. Like he's given us a glimpse. He's given the caterpillar the glimpse of the butterfly before the caterpillar turns into the butterfly. Before the uh, caterpillar knows that it's going to be a butterfly. (laughs) (laughs) So it gives encouragement to keep on slugging through this life and these weakened bodies. It's like I give the example of um, if if I know I'm getting a new car next week, do I really care if my old car has a million leaks? No. I really don't care if it has rust, if it has dents all over it, if it has a couple of flat Mm. tires. Mm. I don't care if it looks ugly. I don't care because why? the knowledge of the new car I'm about to get. (laughs) The joy of that just washes away all the other stuff with the old car, doesn't it? Amen, amen. The whole purpose of doing these shows, um, and, and, you know, we're going to be talking a lot on Bible prophecy and, and, and things of that nature because a lot of churches have neglected that. But the whole point is, is to encourage our, our brethren 
you know, this world is dark. And you and I know this. You know, we we've seen some things. It's it's dark. It's getting worse. Um, and it seems if you, if a Christian keeps their eyes only on this world, they will they will not be able to sustain. They will not be able to uh, endure. They have to do what the Bible says. Keep your minds on heavenly things. Don't forget the Lord's benefits or promises. Remind one another about them. You know because. It brings hope and re- it's a reminder to, uh, to us all that this is only a temporary situation that we are living in right now. The future is eternal for us, and it's going to be a joyous, exciting future. It's not, don't believe the, the lie and the narrative that it's going to be a boring life. It's going to be exciting if you think about it. God, the creator of all, who never runs out of ideas— Okay, is our father, and a a being that can't run out of ideas is not a being that that'll get you bored. I, I promise you. <laughs> amen, amen. The thing is that everything that we do requires a, a sacrifice. If you're an athlete, yeah, to to be a champion, there's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of sweat, a lot of blood, a lot of pain. But at the end, when you, you when you have the trophy. And that's why it tells us to keep our eyes on the prize. Okay, it's it's all yeah. to encourage us to let us know. I know how things are now, but look at what I have for you. And it's a short life, right? Okay, so you know the Amen. Bible in the South tells us that if we live to be eighty, you know that is a plus. But what is this eighty years yeah. compared to an eternity? It's nothing. It's not even a drop in the bucket. It's, you can't even see it. It's not even a blip on the radar. You know, 80 years compared to, you know, you know one of these days, it's going to be like, you know, hey, Lewis, man, you, this is your 8 millionth birthday, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, your name won't be Lewis anymore. My name won't be Chris anymore. Because no, no. We'll no. give it new names. <laughs> yeah. Re- Revelation tells us that, that we will have a new name. And we'll know his name. Amen, brother. Amen. So you know what, brother? I'll leave you with the last word. Um, what would you want to end uh, with our viewers? What would you want to tell them? Okay. Um, a Revelation uh, chapter 3 says um, this. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. This is, uh, I get this pimples. I mean, he's telling us, that if we do not um, dirty ourselves, if we do not um, confirm to the world, we will walk with him in white. And white means glorified body. And we, it'll be an eternity. So this is what we have to think about. That one day, all these sacrifices that we're making down here, it's going to be worth it. We are going to be walking with Jesus, with the Father, with the Holy Spirit, we will be dressed in a glorified body. And we Amen. will not just not defile ourselves here. And, and, that's and here, but here's the thing. Here, here's the thing, too, to add to that. We, we want to make sure that the, the viewers know we're not talking about you got, you got to work uh, to no, maintain no, no, anything no. or to earn anything. You know, that's, that, that's, this is a matter of holiness right there. But the Lord did it all. The Lord did it all. The, 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 the righteousness of the saints is of the Lord. It, it's yeah. not of us or our own abilities. But yeah, if we, we don't defile ourselves in this world, brother, if we hold amen, on, amen. number one, our, re, our reward will be greater in heaven. This is about rewards at that point. And, and we yeah. got to make it clear it's not about salvation, uh, that you got to, no, no. if you don't, you know, do this or that, then, you know, you're going to, you know, you're not going to be glorified. Well, no, you're going to be glorified because you're in the one that overcame. Yes. It's all about him yes. and his and what he did, Amen. right? Yes. And, and, uh, and, and five says, he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garment and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess, confess his name before my father and before his angels. Amen. So that, Amen, you, you, it doesn't get any better than that. If you learn doesn't. anything, yeah. this, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, this is it. I will not blot his name out of the, the Lamb's Book of Life. That's a promise that I tell you. You remember what Jesus said? He said uh, to uh, the disciples, 
uh, that were, were excited about demons being subject to them. He said, mm -hmm. don't rejoice that the, the spirits are subject to you. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Yes. You know, there's rejoicing in knowing that. And, you know, uh, my friends, uh, we're going to uh, end it on this right now. And uh, next week we'll come back, God willing, with another topic. But, uh, you know, we, we encourage you guys to dig into the word of God to study, to show yourselves approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, you know, uh, and, and, and making yourself approved to God through these studies. And the more you study, the more the Lord will enlighten your eyes and, and, and give yeah. you more understanding. That's a promise. And so until next time, my friends, look up, lift up your heads. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha.